There's a new titler for Edius called Viz Title. Edius has got its own decent titler built in called Quick Titler, but it can't do animation. It can do rolling and crawling, but it can't do animation. What Viz Titler is is a program that can do nice animated titles, it can do graphics, it can do glowy and sparkling effects on titles. In fact, it's basically a very good animated titling program. Now, particularly here, I'm going to show you how I did this title. This is the style of title that we used on our Edius tutorial. So you can see there we've basically got some words that pop up, then light up a bit, and then fade away. For a start, in the background, we've just got a graphic that I actually knocked up in Edius, which is just a shot of a computer screen moving in 3D and blurred, and then our graphic of our logo going across it. And on top of that, I put a title created in VizTitle. So how did I make this title up? OK, well, I'm on the Edius timeline here, and I'm going to go to the T button and say Viz Title. And it opens up the Viz Title interface. If you've done a lot of animated titling programs, none of them I've found to be that easy. Viz Title is definitely the easiest animated titling program that I've used. Doesn't mean that it's absolutely perfectly straightforward, but it's certainly far better than any of the others that I've used. I quite like Title Motion Pro that used to come with previous versions of Edius but it was a real pig to remember how to do stuff. This titler, once you get the hang of it, it uses the same kind of logic that you do in all the other Edius filters. If you're used to After Effects, it's very much like that. And once you get the hang of it, very easy to remember how to do stuff. So for a start, you come into this title, and I'm going to click on the T button and then start typing. Conveniently, it actually came up in the same style as my previous title, but you can also come in here and change the text to be anything that you like, basically any true type font that you've got on the computer. I have a lot of really, really awful fonts, so I'm going to go for impact because it's nice and solid. I want to pick it up and move it around, just grab hold of it and move it. I want to make it bigger, you can just grab hold of the edges and drag. So very much like things like quick title and so on. Of course, as I'm dragging, it's distorting it, so holding down on shift, is going to keep the dimensions or keep the proportions again just like other programs I can change the width, the size, you know, all the usual kind of stuff looking at the style of it there, maybe I like that, maybe I don't but in this case I'm just going to double click on one of the pre-made styles down here and use that that as you can see is the blue style that I was actually using on my titles let's put it back to good old solid impact I'd like to stick this in the centre of the screen. Well, I can right-click and I can find ways to align objects up that way. I remember the keyboard shortcuts like C, that puts it in the centre. Or as you're dragging, there's these nice, helpful, handy little lines that pop up. It's helping me to line it up in the centre of the screen. Now, I might not like that style, maybe I want to change it. Come over here and you can see I've got something for the face, something for the outline, something for the shadow. If I didn't have a shadow or an outline, I just click on this little plus and I can add another one in. Now, I've got an outline and a shadow because that was part of my style, but if I didn't have them, I could put them in. I'm going to go to the face, and if you come down here to where it says color, you can see here I can have a color or a gradient and then different types of gradient. I'm just going to stick with the gradient, which I quite like. Maybe I want to plump a little color in the middle, so I'll just click on there and add another color in. So I've got a kind of light in the middle there. Again, pretty standard, straightforward ways of doing colour. You can also come down here and you can put on sheens and bitmaps and bumps and bevels. Let's put a little bevel on that to make it a little more 3D-ish. After that, you've got the outline. What colour is it? Well, my outline happens to be black and I'm against a black background, so you're not seeing it. But if I made it white, you can suddenly see I've got a white outline. And come down a bit more, you've got the shadow. And if I add in any more of these, there'll be more here where I can adjust all of that lot. So I've got my title. Pretty happy with it line it up in the centre of the screen. Now I'd like it to sort of move in and move out. Actually the words sat there but they got, kind of got revealed and then disappeared again. Now to do that I'm going to go to this tab and down here you can see I've got three different options. In effects, effects that make it stay there and out effects. I've got something that tells me how long it will be if I stick it in there. Any of these number fields that pop up inside of this title, you can just grab hold of it, just like in Edius, and drag them bigger or smaller. Now, the effect I used on that was a wipe. I'm going to click on the wipe there, and down here you can see something which basically reveals a clip. 
make sure I use the ins because I'm coming in and I'm going to grab that and dump that onto the title. Now if you come over here, down here I have a timeline. Down the timeline you can see I've got an object called text. If I open it up you've got 3D transform which is basically where it is in 3D space up, down, left, right and I've got another track that's been added in called wipe. This is my wipe that I just dragged over there. I dropped it in the middle so it popped in the middle. So actually it wipes itself in from when it starts to the end. Of course I got it completely wrong because I really need it to be at the start. So let's grab it and throw it at the start. Press the play button. In wipes the title. I want it to wipe out again so let's just go back to the wipe settings out. Choose the wipe out and drop it down there. And now I've got a wipe out. So in pops my title. But it wipes out again. Hmm. Don't want it to go that way. I want it to go the other way. I'd rather it wiped from the T to the E, not the E to the T. So it's doing the right thing, just the wrong way around. So how do I change that? Well, come up to Pattern, and then double click on it. And you notice it comes up with a whole bunch of different black and white images. These are basically gradient wipes. If you're familiar with the gradient wipe in EDIUS, this is the same thing. And you can see I'm going from white to black. Let's try going from black to white instead. Hey, off it goes. Quite like that. Be nice if it was a bit fuzzier. Well, there's a feather setting. You can just adjust the feather so it can get fuzzier or less fuzzy. All of this is basically keyframed. If you look down here, there's little dots down here which represents the keyframes. So in fact, what I've got here is a wipe and it goes from 0 to 100% across the wipe, defined by these two keyframes. If you open up the track, you can see the keyframes and you can pick them up and move them around. You click on the keyframe itself, you can actually change it. So click on that keyframe, come back up here, and you can see I've got the percent, which determines how much it wipes it out. And very eddious like There's keyframes that do stuff, you adjust them, pick them up, and move them around. So I've got my title wiping in and wiping out. I then had a sparkly effect on top of that. There was a little glow coming out of the words, and then a sparkle went across that as well. So let's come over to the list of effects over here and see what other effects have I got that I can use on these words. Well, there's lots of movements and 2D stuff and stretching and exploding and things like that. But actually what I used was a shine. A nice glowy shine effect. So I'm going to come over here. You can see I've got four or five different presets. I'm going to choose this one here, which is blue, because my words are blue. Just drag it and drop it onto the title. And on goes the shine. It's again defaulted to a certain amount of time. So basically as I play that, it's going to wipe in. Then it's going to shine. Then it's going to disappear. Maybe I want that shine to go a bit longer. Come down to the shine on the timeline. Drag it out a bit. If I wanted to go over the entire thing, I could just drag it out over the entire title. And I've now got a sparkly shine. Not a very bright shine. I'd like to improve upon that. So let's select the shine and then come over here. Running out of space because I'm using a very low resolution. Unfortunately, I wish I could use a higher resolution, but then it'd be difficult for you guys to see it. But you can see here I get to the things that control the color of the shine. That's why it goes a bit purpley and a bit bluey. You might also notice that as I'm dragging through, I'm seeing the shine, but as soon as I let go, it disappears. Why is it doing that? That's because basically this title has got two modes. There's the mode that shows you an animation in progress, and there's the mode that shows you the actual words, governed by these two boxes here. When you're in this mode, as soon as you stop dragging, it'll go back and show you just the words. Click on it again, it shows you a stage, and then wherever you drag, it shows you what it looks like at that point. It's actually very useful to have two modes. You have some really complicated title going on, and you've got your words flying completely off screen at the start, or you can still change the words just by clicking back to that. You don't have to come and fiddle with your cursor. But anyway, in my case, I want to make sure that's selected so I can now see the glowy effect and what it looks like at that point. And I'm going to want to boost it. Let's make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to choose the boost and up it and make it brighter. What else can I do? I can turn down the finest, basically fiddle with it, make sure it looks like you want. Spread it out a bit. I've got different presets I can choose from anyway what heaven looks like. Apparently heaven looks like that. Yeah, that's quite nice. I think I, I think I like that colour to go blue there. Let's make me get a nice blue on that. And let's make that a sort of lighty blue. You get the idea, I'm fiddling. 
So now I've got my glow going across there. Why does the glow move? Because certain parts of it are keyframed. Let's just open it up on the timeline and look down here and you can see, oh look, boost. I've keyframed the boost, which is how much it gets bright. Various items around here have got keyframed. If I don't like what they are, I can pick them up and move them around. I can delete keyframes just by clicking on delete. But actually the way this is working, that's what's causing it to move over. I've got a center of the blur, which is this little green dot, moves across the screen. It's effectively this thing is a light behind the title, which is then causing a glow on the title. Again, very like Edius, very like After Effects. This was gravy about this. I'd like to put something else on that. Let's see what else I can shove on here. Let's open up the list of things. Oh, there's a star glow. There's a lens flare. There's a stripe. Let's put a stripe on it. Just drag that, drop it onto the timeline. And you can see what I've got here. A sort of lens flare going completely across the image. Now, where do I want it to start? Well, I think I'd like it to start about here. There we are kind of coincides with the light beam going across the words. Comes in just after the wipe, goes out just before the text wipes off. Yep, quite like that light beam effect. Interesting thing here is that the stripe here is being affected by the shine. One thing that's slightly different between this title and Edius is that if the shine is on top of the stripe, so it affects the stripe, whereas in Edius it would be the other way around. If I turn off the shine, you'll notice that the way that lens flare there just becomes a much smaller flare. Turn it back on again, and it's huge because it's been shined by the shine. I can drag them around and put them in different orders. I put the shine after the stripe, you see I suddenly get a totally different look of title. I like it the other way around. So now I've set my title up, quite happy with the look of it. I'm going to click on the exit and say save as animation, and that will save the title back into Edius. There we are. There's my title against a black background. Let's just put that on another video track, put the fancy background I worked out underneath it, and there we are, I've got a nice real-time animated title. Now this title actually uses the graphics card. If you've got a decent graphics card inside of the computer, it'll actually use it to render and play the title in real time. It doesn't do everything, and the thing that's particularly will struggle with is some of these shine effects. So the way those two shines are going together is not something it can quite cope with. It's not doing a bad job here, but it really isn't playing it 100%, so I'll have to render it. Find an awful lot of his title titles, it will play back in real time. The shines, it doesn't. The final thing I did to finish my title off is I went to the list of effects, went to blending modes, and then grabbed hold of the screen blending mode and dropped it onto the title. You notice if you do that, the words there just merge a little bit better with the background. Screen off, screen on. And let's play that back, and there we are. There's my title with my glowy effect.